so good to be with you guys. I don't know if you guys have heard, I was in a uh, 10 day darkness retreat. So, and I got a black eye um, at the retreat because it was pitch black and uh, I hit my eye on, I think a step or something. Um, and it was a very humbling experience because it was right after I thought to myself, man, Kyle Cease is badass. And then it was like, nope, the universe is what's badass. And it was saying, humble yourself. So I am here to join you guys today. Yeah, total blackness. If you didn't hear the story, I might talk about parts of it, but it was on last Wednesday night's AEP call. But 10 days in total silence in complete uh, darkness for 10 days. No phone, no distractions, no person to talk to other than the guy, Scott, bringing me um, food through a double dark door. But it was the most incredible experience of my, of really, other than having Vivi, of my entire life. <clears throat> and I'm so happy to be with you guys today. Um, we're going to do some incredible, deep, deep, deep work. And uh, the first thing I want to just offer you um, is to uh, remember that the star of this entire thing is this moment, is this space, is your heart beating, is the energy that truly is connected to you here, is not concerned about your financial story, your story of what is going on circumstantially, your story of what people think about you. This energy is right here and it is a natural healer. And I wanna just offer you to really surrender to this space today. Um, and we're going to be doing, you know, full day and full day tomorrow of listening to the space, of connecting to the space, of discovering that one of the many reasons we're here, but to me, one of the most important reasons we're here is our consciousness, is expanding our consciousness, is connecting to uh, the bigger picture, connecting to the truth of what you are, connecting to something bigger, because all of our pain, all of our circumstances, all of our whatever, is a mirror of <clears throat> the consciousness we're connecting to. Meaning like when you're really here, you notice you have many less problems than you thought and, and life is much more fulfilling and our circumstances that fall apart are here to get us to move into this bigger space, this space of this moment, this space of right now. So we're going to do some incredible work and it will pay off in so many different ways. One, it pays off in fulfillment, feeling fulfilled. I'm sure you've many times experienced getting through a challenge or creating something or achieving something and maybe going, is this all there is? There's a, there's a level of fulfillment that's bigger than you just getting a bunch of money, achieving something, winning an award, being number one, whatever it is, right? So this moment has all of this. This moment has everything you need. And the ironic thing, one of millions of things that I learned from the 10 days in total silence was as I connected to the oneness of what I am, all of my challenging circumstances changed. Meaning like when I came out of the 10 day thing, I thought, oh, I have this issue and this issue to deal with and these things and whatever. And they all worked themselves out. And it really felt to me like life is a mirror of how much you're connected to this moment, right? There's a shrinking consciousness um, that we live in the consciousness of the collective online, the consciousness of, you know, a relationship that might make you feel smaller, the consciousness of you thinking who you are is the person running the circumstances and your job is to stay in this smaller thing and keep it going. That's why when you're just alone with yourself, sometimes with no phone, you almost don't know what to do. Meanwhile, that's the most powerful place you can be, right? You right here, you connecting, to all of you right here, 
but you're almost like uncomfortable that you don't have, you know, the phone or you don't have the story, you don't have a bunch of YouTube videos to watch or some feeling of connection to people. And life is trying to get us to this place right now. It's trying really hard to get us to understand life will mirror your connection to yourself. So I want you fully connected to yourself, right? Right here, just connecting to here. So we're going to get so much out of the next two days. We're going to be both sitting on our computer, hearing this content, expanding ourselves and actually meditating actually connecting with ourselves, actually seeing what happens. And I promise you that you will discover in the next two days so many incredible breakthroughs, so many results as a byproduct, so many things answering themselves that this will pay for itself over and over and over and over and over again. So the first thing I wanna do is offer you to end as many distractions as possible to get the most out of today and tomorrow, right? Meaning like if you got 17 tabs open and you can see someone's popping up on Facebook or there's an update on YouTube or whatever, I wanna dare you to first of all, make the most out of this by closing other tabs on your computer. Like really, really, really allowing yourself to play full out and be here and be present. The second thing is you know, maybe have no other thing going on like the phone, you know, really allowing yourself to be here. This this chaotic way that we live is is starting to finally completely fall apart to have. I need to have 10 people and different tabs open, you know, constantly have 9 million other videos going, whatever it is, the phone. Also, I need to check it 100 times a day. It blew my mind to be in this darkness for 10 days and discover how much I didn't need to be a part of any news, any stories, anything going on, anything, All right? I, I came out 10 days later and there was no news. And had I been out of it, I might've been looking at the news and might've been seeing these things. And whether it's news or gossip or a story or other people's, you know, uh, connection together in uh, being anti something, whatever it is, and any, any, you know, connecting with people on a circumstance versus what you are, uh, that is a shrinking consciousness. And I noticed that when I was pulled from that and in the darkness retreat and in this place, all of those things didn't need me. The world still seemed to move forward. Right. And the more I did this work, the longer I went, the more the more that I was able to be present with my darkness. And because of that, the less, you know, rash decisions you need to make, the more present you can be with your darkness, the more present you can be with your pain, which is part of what today is about being with your pain, being with your guilt, your fear, your shame, right? Being in the darkness for 10 days for me brought up all kinds of things like that, but it was within 15 minutes, it was pulled from me. It would like every 15 minutes be like, here's this thing, here's this thing from your childhood, here's this bad experience from your past. And I want you to not run from it, not go eat, not go look at something and distract yourself, but be with it. And it was within a matter of minutes that it would be there, it would show me something, then it would teach me a new lesson, and then it would purge it. It would bring something up, it would show me something, it would teach me a new lesson, and then it would take me to a deeper level of unconditionally loving consciousness that felt like I outgrew that story and could feel a whole new level of forgiveness for it. And because I did, it would purge itself, right? You are here to move through things because this space is here to take care of everything for you. It is the most humbling, incredible, beautiful thing that you have. It is, it, is, it is here to heal you. 
no matter what you feel your circumstances, no matter what you feel your circumstances, this space is here to heal you. It doesn't care about your circumstance. In fact, in the healing of you, it will also change the circumstance. It, it takes you to a new world where that circumstance doesn't exist anymore. And you wanting to heal a circumstance versus heal you is what keeps the circumstance alive, right? I mean, there's some circumstances that it's probably good to protect yourself from, like, you know, maybe lock the doors, you know, I get it. Wear a seatbelt, have some protective mechanisms in there. But there's also this line where you actually think that a circumstance can affect you. And if you do, then every time you fix it, you're still totally enslaved to that circumstance, right? You're still completely a victim to that circumstance. And there were many circumstances while I was in the darkness retreat that came up and I kept wanting to leave the darkness retreat and fix the circumstance. And at one point life said to me, you can either be completely free of the circumstance, which will naturally fix it, or you can fix the circumstance which will stop your freedom, right? And we're in a place where life has gotten us to a condition where we're just fixing circumstances. We're just plate spinners. We're just keeping relationships going that don't need to be going anymore. We're, we're keeping stories going that don't need to be going anymore. And life is going, who would you be without having to fix that circumstance? Like what level of consciousness would you be if you didn't have to keep fixing that circumstance? What would happen if you were here? What would happen if you were put here? What if you were put into this moment? What if I'm here to keep your circumstances falling apart so you stop being addicted to them and instead offer you total freedom? And what if that freedom gives you everything you need what if in that freedom you notice you don't have to chase things as much? You actually really, really, really need less money. You find more joy in moment to moment. As my 10 days in the darkness kept going, I just found louder and louder. Just It just was like not caring about achieving anything and just caring about moment to moment with my daughter, with her mom, Christy, who's just become such a dear friend. Just like really 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 it's just trying to get you to see that the only thing that matters is now it's really just now just now and if you feel in this moment just now chaos oh be with it that's a gift you get to feel chaos you don't have to avoid the chaos and fix it with a circumstance just being here now just being here now. Oh, I'm scared right now. Beautiful. There's a space available that you are to be here for that space, for that fear. And you don't have to go, I'm scared, so I got to check the phone again. I'm scared, so I need to eat a bunch of sugar. I'm scared, so I need to whatever. Just being with this because you're always about 15 to 20 minutes away from that pain, not only being removed, but being removed. It wants to take it out. It wants to take it out. It takes it out. This pain or this space took the core levels of the trauma out of my body and they're still out. It goes, oh, the trauma in your body is just based on a collection of beliefs that you're not seeing and you haven't loved. And the longer you sit in this space, the more we show you, oh, that's this, that's this, that's this. And you start to learn all of your pain was just perception. All of your pain was just perception. All of your emotional pain is perception. Can you be with that idea for a minute? And when you go, yeah, not me, I promise you, there's no one we can talk to that we won't see eventually, it was perception. Every client I work with, it always turns out to be perception. All of your, yeah, but that person left me. There's perception in there. Yeah, but I'm going broke. There's perception in here. There's perception that 
if you go broke, you're not enough. And you keep that thing alive. You keep that fear alive. So life gives you more of it, more of it, more of it to give you the, the perception that you're not enough. The perception of that you're small, the perception that you're whatever. This is where I don't get love from my parents. This is where I don't get love. This is where I'm small. This is where my dad says you're worthless if you're broke. Perception, you're scared that this means you are not loved. <sighs> I'm totally enough, but I want to RV and need money to buy one. My perception. I love the idea that we just hear that sentence and already can do all the work. I bet if I talked to you longer, we could find more. But the first thing is to get that you're enough and take off that second part. Renata says, I'm totally enough, but I want an RV and need money to buy one. My perception, your perception is you're in lack until you have those things. Which life goes, okay, keep them broke for that from that because they're saying they're in lack without it right? Can you forgive that you don't have one right now until you actually don't perceive that you need one so that you can create a space of massive creativity and joy where you're enough as is. And from that place, see what your value ends up being as a byproduct of you understanding that you are enough as is, right? All of that. Can you feel that? Like, yeah, I like there's a great there's a great point when people say, you know, yeah, I totally forgive this and this and this, but it's still not working. And then I'm like, yeah, you don't forgive it. You don't forgive it because there's still a part of you that says I need more. So you're in a place where you're basically declaring that you're in a place of lack right now. And the more you're declaring you're in a place of lack right now, the more life goes. That's what you want. right? That's what you want. Life is saying, you're saying to life, I want this, I want this, I want this, which really means I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, which really means I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. So life goes, you got it. That's what you're asking for. Life mirrors you so freaking directly. <laughs> it goes, you think you're not enough, so you got it now. And I understand that in the past, there've been a lot of us that wanted something and still achieved it. But do you notice at the same time, there was still something in many of us that said, why am I still not happy? Why am I still a victim? Why am I still small? Why am I still not enough? Why am I still not fulfilled? Oh, because that was the answer. That relationship, that income, that career, that money, that was the answer to my heart, not me. How about forgiveness? It's a beautiful thing when you hope someone forgives you and then they forgive you. But if they forgave you and that's what freed you, now you're not forgiving yourself and you are just totally the, the <laughs> victim to what they say. Because it's up to people when they forgive you based on their life. Life was showing me things that I just discovered in me that I don't want to be anymore when I was in that thing. And that changed me and took me to a place where I'm not that person, where I'm no longer that, right? Life does that. So instead of going, I'm going to wait till this person forgives me, which is up to them, then you are still in a place where you're still stuck and your forgiveness is not God, it's not source, it's a person outside. So you still don't forgive yourself. You still don't forgive yourself. When someone forgives you and that releases you, that does not mean you forgive yourself, right? You are here to ascend to a higher perception where you, and I don't mean a bypassing forgive. No, I forgive myself, screw it, and I can keep, no, I mean like life showing you what you have been to get to this place so you no longer are that so that you graduate from it. So you cry out the stuck patterns that created that. Life does this for us. All of us, the longer we can sit in our pain, our darkness, the more it will show us all the patterns 
that you don't want to be anymore, all the things that aren't you, and it will free you from it. It will free you from it. And then you don't go, I got to get away from these type of people, blah, blah, blah. You're free of that because those people that feel like stuck energy and dark energy, right? Those things that feel like they can only trigger what you judge in you, right? They can only trigger what you judge in you. So when you start to forgive all those things about you, you start to see the people that trigger you as just in their own fear and in their own process and in their own movement towards their own enlightenment. And you just see them as someone you wanna hug because they don't have ownership over you, right? They don't have this ability to get you stuck anymore because you don't feel under them. And one of the things that could come out of this is you helping yourself to love every part of yourself. I don't care who you are. Can you love every part of yourself? And can you love everyone in the past? Because there might have been things that you didn't like that happened to you or that you didn't like that you did. And I understand that. But your judgment of it doesn't make it go away. It keeps it going. It keeps it continuing. So you're here to learn forgiveness for real. You're here to, to forgive yourself for real. You're here to forgive others for real because guess what? Every time you forgive, you release attachment to something before this. And the more attachment you release, the more connected to God you become. I'll tell you something that probably is hard to believe, but is really true. By days eight and nine, I was able to see through the damn walls. I mean, I was so free of the attachment to other people. I would have so many moments come up where I was like, I wanna go home and it would go, why do you wanna go home? And I was like, I, I wanna hang out with this person who you know I feel love from. I wanna hang out with this person. And it, was, goes, and it goes, that's why you need to stay here because you're still stuck to your mom through that person. Right, so I want you to stay. You can say out loud how much you wanna go home, but I want you to stay here. And it would stay, okay, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay. And then I would feel my attachment to that person break off and I would feel this feeling of falling into God. And the more I did, the more here I was, the louder the silence was, and I would just see stars through the wall. I would see stars, I could see floating, I could see being held because there's attachments we have all over the place and that's the source of our pain. That person didn't call me back. That's an attachment. I, 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 most of our relationships, every relationship almost is attachment and not love, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's attachment. When everything another person you're dating can do can hurt you, that's attachment. It hurts me if they talk to that other person. That's attachment, you're attached right and i know this can be annoying to hear but that doesn't make it not true because the more i stayed present and noticed that i wanted to go home and get love from this person or be seen by this person the more i was like i have to stay here and it would hurt 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 and i would think this is going to take days and then it would break off a minute later and i would land on myself and be so much more receptive to more so much more here. I felt so really loved and, uh, and uh, I would just feel held, I would feel loved. And then I know that from that place that I was accessing a new consciousness, meaning like you could feel you were birthing something that was so much more available to you that like you're going, the world is going to mirror this. The world is mirroring this. I'm in a different place. What would life be like if you weren't stuck to other people, if you weren't stuck to money? How much more of those things could come to you and how much would you not care because you're not stuck to it? You don't need it. You don't need these things. Get to a place where you don't need them to survive. You need you. Remember I say in my book, The Illusion of Money, remember that every dollar you've ever brought in in your life and every person you've ever brought in and every job you've ever brought in and everything you've ever created came from you. So don't get excited about money, get excited about you. You're the source of it. 
You're the source of everything. And today we're going to start connecting to the source. And the more you connect to the source of what you are right here, right now, the more you discover that the abundance that you're seeking outside is all that you are right here. You are abundance. You are abundance. Abundance isn't outside of you. You are abundance. You are the source of everything. But if life is mirroring you and all of your constant desire is getting something outside of you, life is going to mirror to you the concept that your happiness is outside of you. So it will keep you a constant victim to your circumstances. It will keep you stuck to your circumstances because you are spelling out over and over and over again to yourself that life is outside of me. My happiness is outside of me. So life goes, you got it. Here's proof that it's not. Here's the breakup. So you feel the trauma in your body and release it. Here's the, here's the job falling apart. Here's COVID-19. Here's staying home. Here's the idea that your happiness was in a bar or a restaurant or in a salon in getting a haircut. Here's the idea that your happiness was in your external freedom. Your external freedom is what's being taken away from you. Not your internal freedom, which is actually the real freedom. And the more external freedom we've had, the more we never ever even gave a shit about our internal freedom. We've all been in prison up until now. We've all been in prison, just we've had the ability to constantly go to different places and distract ourselves with different people, all of us have, and distract ourselves with different food and drinks and whatever, and life goes, dude, they're so stuck on their external circumstances and have no ability to see that they're not actually free, that we need to cut off their externals. And if you're here, you're looking for your internal freedom. And that's what we want because life will take care of everything else. All of your pain is the mirror that the outside is where your freedom is. All of your pain, all of it, all of it. And we're going to find and discover and be with our internal freedom. And even though it might feel painful right now, why don't you join me in taking just a minute and feel the true freedom of the now. Now, right now, when you feel the freedom, your mind's going to go crazy. It's going to go, no, there's got to be a problem to overcome. There's got to be entertainment. There's got to be whatever. So let your mind go crazy because it wants to be small but receive the freedom of this moment right now. Take a deep breath in. Heather asks, how do you let go of childhood trauma? I'll actually tell you that in a second. Yes, great question. So before I answer that, let's just take, I'm just gonna time here a minute, just a minute of total freedom of the now, just a minute, right? I know I told you no phone. I'm keeping a phone to monitor stuff like this, but let's just feel a minute of feeling your heart beating and let all the chaos of this, all the pain is the smaller story dying to find something to fix, right? Dying to find something to overcome, right? So take a deep breath in and let's just spend one minute letting the chaos of the ego not have any answer to a problem for a second and just feel your heart beating feel right here we're just going a minute one minute so just be here take a deep breath feel your heart just be with hear what's here, even if it's not words, just pain or the silence or the sound of the fan in the room. Notice the things like your organs doing what they do, your heart beating completely here, not caring about a pattern, not caring about a story. 
and that's one minute. And when people say to me, how did you do 10 days? I just did one minute over and over and over and over again. Your ego hates looking at 10 days, right? Your story hates looking at the future, but that's just a concept. There's no such thing as the future. Right? There's no such thing as the future. So if I wanted you, or I said, let's meditate for a year, you might freak out, but you only have to focus on one second. It's actually only one second, and it's one second again, and then it's one second again, and then it's one second again. There's no future, but the concept of the future is so overwhelming, right? This idea, I mean, literally, if I say we're going to meditate for a minute or meditate for 10 years, there's no difference because you only have control of this moment okay we're going to meditate one second okay we're going to meditate for 10 years there's no difference because they're just only one second the ego goes i gotta take on all that the more you do this work the more the ego has less to take on you don't have to take on everything think of all the things you take on that you don't need to take on what someone else does, what someone else says about you, the news, everything on the news, almost everything on the news, almost everything on the news. How many times did you hear a president said this or the stock market's gonna fall or whatever, and whether it did or it didn't, whatever, you didn't need to take it on. You don't need to take on your, your view of your mother. Yeah, you don't need to take on your thoughts. They're just passing. You don't even have to take on your thoughts. What are the things that you have tried to control up until today that you actually don't have to control? And I wanna dare you to write, uh, write down some answers. So Linda says, how I'll pay off debt. Beautiful. What if that's actually something you don't have to take on? Meaning like energetically. What if by not needing to focus on how do I pay off my debt, you create a space for magic to actually be able to happen? All of the abundance of the world is trying so hard to come to you and you're busy focusing on how do I pay off my debt? Do you see that? Really take that in. All of the world, the universe, this moment is trying so hard to just give to you right now. And you're taking on what's going on in the news, what someone said about you, how do I pay off my debt? What are you doing? It's already being taken care of. I remember having a day five, I'm in the, the darkness and I said, I wanna go home. And it said, why do you wanna go home? And I was like, because I have all these things to fix. I have all these, you know, and it goes, so you'd rather go to where you're very conditionally loved and you have problems to overcome versus receiving the massive love that I am that's just healing you left and right. You can receive full love right now that's just healing you and taking all of your childhood trauma out and just taking care of all your problems on my own. You'd rather go home where it's harder, where life is fixed things, right? Do you get what I'm saying? Ava says, so how do you plan anything? That's a belief that you have to. That's a belief that you have to. Do you know about the study that showed that when 1% of a city meditated, 1% of a city meditated, the crime went down in that city 28%. We're connected on a quantum level. So when you actually connect to the power of what you are, you'll discover that the world starts also opening up and forgiving themselves, allowing yourself to be free. That's why you're here. This is a real study. They've shown, you can watch Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind and it talks about this. When you are meditating, you are actually causing other people to open their heart. You are creating space. You are creating things that are bigger you have to fix things on the level of a new level of love. So here's a question that I'm seeing. What about racism? I hear you. 
what a horrible thing that we are living at a consciousness that has it. What it like, why are we living at a consciousness that is constantly able to be so small to see different people as different than us, different races, different people, different genders, different incomes, different age, everything as different than what we are. Are we that stupid to think that anyone is different than what we are? There is a consciousness that you can go to that will take the illusion of separation away from you and have you realize that every person is you. And if you're fighting it at the level of the problem, you keep it going. It's trying to create more separation and it's trying to get you to go. You will never fix this at the level of the actual consciousness of the problem. You have to go to a new consciousness. You have to. You have to bring in full forgiveness into yourself. You have to bring in full love into yourself. So one of the questions on here was childhood trauma. You cannot remove your own childhood trauma. You cannot remove your own childhood trauma by being at the same level of consciousness as the childhood trauma. But the example that I used on Wednesday night was if you go into the sun for 10 days, you're going to get a suntan no matter what. Or if you go for two days, you're going to get a suntan. No matter how much you argue with the sun, no matter how much you try to orchestrate your own suntan, no matter what, the only factor is, are you in the sun? And then something bigger than the story of you will change your skin to tan. It will change you. So to heal everything, you have to connect to something that's bigger than you. The more you connect to that, the more you become the thing that's bigger than you, and the more you purge what you're not. You cannot look at the issue from the same level of consciousness as the issue. So when we meditate, we're starting to move to a higher consciousness. And a lot of people don't want to do that because it'll also be the death of places in your life that you got a lot of connection for and love for and addictive patterns from. So it's scary to go into the sun if you got a lot of love for being pale, if you fix trauma by being pale. It's scary to go into the sun and sit there and let yourself get tan if you have spent your whole life being pale. So when people meditate, they freak out. Guess why they freak out? because it's actually killing for real through love what you're not. And when you meditate, it gets hard because you're actually getting a suntan. And it goes, I'm going to give you love and you are going to connect to the unconditionally loving part. And one of the first things we have to do in doing that is go through your childhood trauma, find where it happened, look at the illusion that's under it, figure out if we love that illusion and you don't actually have to do anything, just stay in the sun. When I was in the darkness for 10 days, it healed a ton of childhood trauma. But Kyle, the story of Kyle didn't do anything. If anything, I, I tried to speed it up or I tried to stop it or I tried to do it myself and it was just laughing at me. It was like, you're not gonna get rid of this. And the more you try to, the more you're gonna suffer. Let go and let me. Source goes, let me do this. Let me do this. Please stop trying to orchestrate your own surrender. You need to connect to a new consciousness and we need to connect to a new consciousness. We need to connect to a new consciousness. You wanna really heal? You wanna really heal the world? This is the how. This is the how. How do I pay off my bills? This is the how. Go to a consciousness where you're not totally stuck on the idea that your bills are bigger than you. Go to a consciousness that says you're abundant, not survival, right? Go to a consciousness that's new, that you don't understand from here, that requires patience, that requires you to surrender to it. Go to a new consciousness, listen from a bigger space. Now we did one minute, I say now, we take what we just said and do five minutes. We're gonna go longer and longer and longer. 
I just want to offer five minutes. Now remember, five minutes is no different than one minute because it's always just this second and this second and this second. Your ego's yelling, you can't do this. Kyle did it, but you can't. Of course you can. Of course you can. Your ego is horrified. Your ego's about to be loved to death. So it's doing everything it can. And Heather, one great thing is the fact that you said, your ego said this. If your ego's saying this, what are you? Because you're the space that sees it. You're not the ego, and you already know that based on how you said that. You are the space that holds compassion and patience and love for that ego that's understandably scared to death. So instead of the ego yelling, see it as you as a little kid scared and just hold space for it for a second. So everyone take a deep breath in and release it. I hear you, Layla. I hear all the egos are freaking out because they're about to lose their job and they're about to become best friends of yours. I want us not to get rid of the ego, but to love the ego. The real space of love can hold a space of compassion for the ego to still exist. And the more the ego is allowed to exist, the more it might accidentally take off, right? So everyone take another deep breath here and let's just go five minutes, but notice you're really only going a second and then another second and then another second, and then another second. Feel your heart beating, that's true. Feel the space that's here, that's true. Feel your breath, that's true. All the things that are in the past and future are not, but it is true that there are thoughts of the past and future coming up so they can be held and not fixed as truth. Feel compassion for that heart that's racing, Denise. Let's do a little bit, five minutes which really is just a second over and over and over again. Go ahead and start. Just feel this moment. It's just a suggestion as you relax here into this. Let everything you're worried about be okay. What if I go broke? What if they abandon me? What if I lose this and that? Just make it okay so you don't go into fight or flight trying to fix just a thought. It's okay if that happens. It's okay. We're not aiming for that and we're not saying it will happen, but the more okay you make something, the more you can forgive it and heal it. So every, what if this happens, make it okay. Just notice how you feel right now and be present with it. It's okay to feel some darkness or fear or guilt or shame or doubt or fear or excited. Just let these feelings be there.
You only have one more second and then another one more second. One second. One second. Each heartbeat is just concerned about that beat. It's not going 10 years of heart beating. Just now, what do you need now? What do you want to feel now? What do you feel now? Do you receive all that is now? Nothing to fix now. It's all fine. What if they leave me? It's fine. What if we break up? It's fine. What if it's just thoughts that you're allowing to open up a little bit? What if I lose this? It's fine. Hmm. Hmm. Take a deep breath in. And that's five minutes right there. Kelly just said, I feel like I can't receive yet because I'm crying out so much shame since childhood. So guess what that's going to be replaced by? You're, you're nailing it, Kelly. It has to purge what you're not. So it's purging shame out. And what do you think that shame is being replaced by? If you feel sadness or pain, yeah, right? Oh, there's a ton there, Kelly, for all of us. Yeah. So in five minutes, Kelly's finding shame and purging it out. Some of you might be finding anxiety and fear. It might start off with anxiety and fear, and then it might go to sadness. Not being in a denial about the fear, but going into a sadness, going into a space here. That's what we want. At one point, it makes the fear so overwhelming that finally it accepts it and it moves it into sadness. Sadness and fear. I'm scared to face my childhood. Well, no problem. The sun tanning will do it at its pace for you. You will never, ever really be handed something you can't handle. That's something you got to know. It will release the childhood that you don't want at the level you make yourself receptive to it. In other words, it will never do it too overwhelmingly. You understand what I'm saying? It will never make it harder than it is. Take that in for a minute. It will never go, here's a childhood that we're releasing that you can't handle. It will only show up when you make yourself receptive to seeing it. Kelly feels space now from that. Beautiful. Yeah, the heart's only concerned about the current beat, right? What do you need now? What do you have to do now? Instead of saying, I gotta do a year of working out, do you only have to do one push-up, followed by another push-up? This is how soul works. It goes, what do I need to do now? Not what's next week's problem I gotta look at and, and fix now, because you don't even understand you can access a consciousness in a few days that's bigger than any problem you perceive that you have. Like we're going to let our problems take care of yourself. I want you to play with that concept. What if you have no problems, even though you think you do, and by listening to silence, we're going to trust that the universe is going to take care of some problems. I would love for you to surrender what can I get from this and pay attention to everything that you want and assume the universe is going to take care of it. The universe will take care of your problems. Someone's attacking you, well, they're about to be either out of your life or apologize. What if 
what if, oh, I'm totally broke. Okay, I want you to move as if the universe is trying to take care of that. It's trying to bring you money. It's trying to bring you abundance. It's trying to. I want you to actually surrender to the idea that your ego needs to do it and see if you can go to a consciousness that everything is taken care of. We have not lived in that consciousness so much that life goes, okay, give them a lockdown. Give them a quarantine wake them up in 2020 like wake the world up they need to move to a higher consciousness and you have this opportunity right now to either be re-addicted to stuff or continually go to a bigger here place do you want to fight to get the small circumstance back or do you want to change who you are what really is expansive is not choosing to fight about the circumstance, but instead purge what you're not and change who you are. If you're here, that means you're willing to change you versus trying to change your circumstance or other people. You guys, that's a big deal. Every circumstance that's bothering you is a sign you have room to expand your consciousness. Let's do that. That's where you will discover the whole world will follow you and that you are the focal point of this entire damn thing. The world mirrors you. You're not mirroring the world. The world mirrors you. You are the, the focal point of the whole damn thing. You will start to understand and see when you heal your own inside trauma and everything like that, the world has to fill the voids that the trauma was in. You have childhood trauma, boom, we find what it is, we forgive it, we go to a new place. The world and the universe have to fill that void with love. If that void suddenly is filled with love, the world will mirror that love to you. That's all you will see. You will only see possibility. You will only see abundance. You will only see freedom. That's how it works. Every fear you have is the, is the showing you of an unconscious underlying thing from your childhood. If you go deeper and deeper and deeper, find a level of love for it and purge it, boom. Then it heals itself. It will be replaced by the universe. And then after this is done too, stay in that place. Like don't, now that I'm done, go back to the old habits. I'll tell you right now, if you do this and then you go back to the old habits after this, life will be more painful because you're gonna have an awareness of how free you could be. Right? This is what we want, to go to the new channel, to go to the power of what you are. And it doesn't matter if we're doing it alone it doesn't matter if you're doing it at asilomar with me it doesn't matter if you're doing it here you can do this i know you can do this totally on your own but by scheduling these two days we're really going to stay in the room and that's what matters right so we're going to expand our consciousness and have the courage to keep doing it so check this out take a deep breath again and let's go 10 minutes. Really, let's do the work. And this is scary to the ego. This is scary to the ego. You're going 10 minutes already? It's not scary. It's scary to the small story, but it's not scary to what you are. And sometimes it'll feel really painful and then it'll be like a minute away from freedom. In fact, let's make it 12. How about we make it 12? Take a deep breath in and release it. Teresa says 15, I'll meet you in the middle, 14. That's not even the middle, 14 minutes right now. Let's listen to silence, the real teacher and the real truth of what you are at 14 minutes. I'm not going, because I don't wanna go 13 minutes. If you're a numbers person, you know, there's a comedian I used to work with named Mitch Hedberg that said, hotels in Vegas don't have a 13th floor. And he goes, but if you have floor 14, you know what floor you're really on. <laughs> because if you jump off a 14th floor balcony, you will hit the ground sooner. All right. So we're going 14 minutes now, 14 minutes of listening to hear. 
But all you have to do again is remember it's just one second, just one second, just one second, and be with whatever comes up that's anticipating 14 minutes, right? So take a deep breath in and release it. And let's go 14 minutes. 14 minutes, feel your heart beating, feel the here-ness of now, feel all the collective stuff that comes up. Feel the darkness, feel the shame, feel the excitement, feel the giddiness. Know this will get easier and easier as we keep going. Just surrender, just get comfortable. And if you need help, feel thank you. Thank you to this moment. Thank you to the other people who have joined us today. Thank you to God. Thank you to now for always being available. Thank you for this space that forgives you all the moments you've never listened to it. It's always available right now. Thank you to the universe. And just pay attention to the now things, the beating of the heart, the breathing in. Just one second, one more second, one more second. Hmm. See it as your sun tanning for 14 minutes. Maybe feel this moment holding you, like fall into it, like it's a mother that's holding you, unconditionally loving you. Notice how good it feels to just breathe in the air and release the air. This amazing capacity that your lungs have to breathe in and out air. Some energy that's running all of your organs and your you know, it's making skin cells that no longer serve you die and new skin cells form. Notice everything's changing. Everything's changing, everything's changing. Let everything change in and out of your life. Every thought that comes up is such a great thought. It's just 
just allowed to come up and pass. As you do this right now, I want you to maybe, if you want to, you don't have to, but ask yourself, what are the things that I don't have to control? I don't have to control my thoughts. I don't have to control anything. What someone's doing, what people think. Let yourself fall into the surrender of the revelation of what you don't have to control, what your dad thinks of you, what your, what your next steps next week are going to be. What do you not have to control that you thought you had to control? Hmm. Huge resol realizations. Hmm. What do you not have to control? I get to release control of that. Someone else has got it. The space has got it. The universe has got it. Maybe be like, thank you to that space for always offering to get it. I never let you get it. I know I'm muted. DoorDash is trying to get to me for my break at 11.30. One second, stay in this, you guys. <laughs> you don't have to control that.
Just being in a place of total surrender. The DoorDash understands where you are. That one might be more mine. What's coming up for you right now? What do you get to release control of? Things being done my way. Yeah, there's a faster way trying to happen. Letting go of how my healing is going. Yeah, yeah, you don't suntan and and go, am I getting tan? Is it, do I tan myself? No, you need the sun. Oh, that's good. My kid's success, Cheryl says. I tried to control what people think of me by analyzing what I say and do so I won't be rejected. Huge fear of rejection or abandonment. How about you don't have to control if people abandon you? They are allowed to abandon you. My body, my children's feelings. It's not your ego's job. In fact, you won't believe how much better those things get when you release that. You give someone the right to abandon you, they'll feel totally free with you and they're going to want to hang around you. Worrying if someone in particular is sad. Fear of being back in the job after 32 years in a job that doesn't bring me joy. My career and creative projects, beautiful. I can release control of that. being sick. Yeah, your body's got it. Cannot trust things will work out. Getting clients for my new business. Yeah, what if you just surrender and become awesome? Waiting to be seen. Can you see yourself this way instead? This is how we want to be seen. beautiful you guys that's 14 minutes that's 14 minutes and I want to give you guys just a few minutes to actually write down 10 things that you do not have to control that up until this retreat you tried to control right 10 things that you do not have to actually control that up until this retreat up until today you've tried to control. The, and the, the scariest thing, to, you're welcome to do more, but at least 10. The scariest thing to write down is the best one to write down. That's where you're gonna have a transformation. 
the scariest thing to write down is the best one to write down. We're writing down 10 things that you discovered from that meditation or you or could discover now that you don't have to control that up until this retreat, up until today, you were trying to control. So it could be what people think of me, what I'm going to do later, what I want to eat tonight, someone else's opinion, uh, you know, my, my mom's addiction, whatever you want to write down. My kids' happiness, what I eat, my weight, money, life, every freaking thing, yeah. And you can feel free to write it down here or you can also write it down on a piece of paper, you know, on a journal. This is big for you to realize that you don't have to control those things. And I'll tell you, by trying to control them, you, you can screw them up more. You keep more of it going. Let people have what they think of you. Let your bank account be exactly what it is. Let, let, let your lack of knowing how you're gonna pay rent next month be there. Let these things be there because you can make room for a higher channel, a higher level of forgiveness, a higher level of consciousness. I'm gonna give you three minutes to write it down. I'm gonna run and go wee wee real quick. Take three minutes and write it down. Yes, what great answers. If he will ever forgive me, you don't have to control that make other people forgive you, right? I'll surrender who will want to work with me in my new business and be okay with uh, some leaving and going to work with other coaches. Beautiful, Charmaine. Toughest one to write was my addiction to prescription painkillers. I'm on day 13 without them. Congratulations, Jane. Celebrate that. That is big. Stop trying to control who my who my husband will be. <laughs> tragedy, yeah. I'm not here to control tragedy from happening. What an interesting concept. How my family feels about me my finances, my imposter syndrome. I have to be entertaining and funny to get love. Ooh, I bet when you weren't, you probably felt trauma, right? Sometimes I know for me, a, a great bonding technique with my father was uh, to laugh at comedy specials, right? And <clears throat> it's a, it, was, it was a way to bond and feel safe. So yeah. You, you get in your body that I better be entertaining or funny. I don't have to control anything. I'm so held, loved, and guided. Uh, I feel that, but then living that hard. Ooh. If my mother loves me, loved one's addiction, a loved one's addiction, if people like me or agree with me, finding customers, if I will get sick again, how to finish our renovation money, yeah, just how I feel about myself. Yeah, isn't it funny the ego gets to create how you feel about yourself? Because how does source feel about you? How does the universe feel about you? Really take that in. Because that's the only thing that's true. What other people think about you is a temporary, dumb, silly thing, right? What do you, what does source feel about you? And you don't want to use that as a spiritual bypass where you're like, source loves me, so you treat everyone like crap. It's like, do you receive how loved you are fully? This moment loves you. It doesn't care about anything else. And you can receive it. You can actually receive it. Remember, source never leaves you, but you leave it all the time. We leave it, but it never leaves us. It is just right behind you, loving you fully, right? How to make my kids happy. 
Kyle, is it okay to try to control my mind or should I let that go? Let that go for a second and see what happens. Let your mind do what it does. Only the mind tries to control the mind. Do you understand that? Only the mind controls. Your heart can't control the mind. <clears throat> your heart's like, oh, I gotta get the mind to, no, your heart doesn't control anything, it loves. And you can move from your mind down to your heart. And you can also move from your heart out to the space So just receive now. When people said, how do you receive? By receiving now. Receiving now. Receiving now. So much in this moment is trying to come to you, is trying to take care of you, is trying to free you. Receiving this moment, receiving what's happening now. What's true, what's true right now? What's true right now? Your heart's beating is true. You don't have to control a materialistic society. You become the next society. <laughs> What's true right now? My heart's beating. I'm breathing. There's air touching my arms. I can hear a fan going. My cat is meowing, says Layla. I am forgiven. I'm here. I am breathing. I feel more peaceful. Oh. What if your number one goal now moved from an external thing to inner peace? What if instead of saying, I gotta get this much, this much, this much, get that taken care of, that taken What if you just said, my number one goal is inner peace and life will match my inner peace? My number one intention is inner peace. If you have inner peace, you're gonna have outer peace. Instead of the goal being this much by this month, this person likes me again, getting that relationship back together, get your goal to be inner peace. That's a good goal for the next two days. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the next two days. Change is going to happen for you by doing this work in the next two days. And it's going to happen in an exponential way, meaning day one, there could be a little more resistance, a little more pain. And what the ego does is it goes, later is going to be like now. So you could have many moments where you feel resistance because it's the first day you're doing this. It could feel like an argument with itself. And it could be going, it's always going to be like this, so I'm going to want to stop. And I'm going to dare you to trust me that there will be exponential results from this. Do you understand what I mean? Exponential results, meaning like tomorrow, it's going to move even faster. And today's a big day that sets us up for incredible what we do want kind of results tomorrow. So some of the ways that this is going to work is there's going to be times where I'm going to bring other people up on the screen. This is kind of just an introduction right now, this first hour and a half here. I'm going to bring other people up on the screen and that want to come up and we're going to do kind of some inner work in front of people and see what the lesson is that unfolds. This is also partly how I do my flow groups where we allow what comes up to flow and we let the universe decide for us what the uh, <laughs> the, what the, the universe decides what um, is supposed to come out and what we're supposed to learn. And I want you to know even if you see someone else going through the work, you're supposed to learn what is coming up. So the way flow groups work and the way this event works is we follow and understand we're getting this message for a reason. Wouldn't it be cool if you looked at all of life as it's giving me this lesson for a reason? You know, when you go out, you go to a coffee shop, you go whatever, you go, oh, life's not giving me what I want. No, it's giving you a lesson every second. Start to see every second it's trying to teach you something. 
It's not working against you. It's teaching you something. Every second life is teaching you something. And you can really have an amazing life. You're like, oh, I get why that's coming up for me. I get what I'm supposed to get with this. Or if you go, I don't know what I'm supposed to get with this. Maybe you're supposed to learn that. Everything is a lesson for you. Everything. 